Welcome to my channel, Living Linux. In this video, I'm going to show you a little bit of software on the Firebat T8 Pro Plus with the Intel N100. So I have the model with the Intel N100, 16 gigabytes of memory and 512 gigabytes of storage. And I reverted back to Ubuntu 23.10 because 24.04, I got some errors about conflicting packages. So uh, perhaps I had to wait until next week and, uh, when they're going to release the beta. But yeah, I didn't want to wait for that. So I went back to Ubuntu 23.10. So one of the things that I usually test is WebGL Aquarium. And compared to the ARM chips, or at least a lot of ARM chips, this chip has a, a higher version of OpenGL. I think it's 4.6 from the top of my head, something like that. And I think you can really see the result with WebGL Aquarium. So if we go up to 15,000, then yeah, you could say it manages 60 frames per second with Chromium. Now the weird part is, is that if you go to YouTube, so let's just say YouTube. And we do the big buck bunny video, 4K 60 frames per second. Now, if we try 4K, then it's not able to handle it. So it's using the VP9 codec. And you can see there's a lot of dropped frames. So it's definitely not using the hardware decoder. Now, if we try that in Firefox, um, yeah, one of the reasons why I still use Chromium is, for instance, with WebGL, Chromium is much faster. So I can show you here. So if we try 15,000 fishes here, you can see that Chromium is almost twice as fast because here we get 35 frames per second instead of 60 frames per second. But if we go to YouTube, and we try Big Bug Bunny again, So it's 4K, let me do the stats for nerds. You can see we have the AV1 codec. Um, well, occasionally it still drops a frame here and there, but I guess you really don't notice that. So yeah, interestingly, with Firefox, with YouTube, um, you are using the hardware decoder. So I've so far I haven't seen that a Raspberry Pi 5 was able to play 4K YouTube. So with the Intel N100, that should be a, a piece of cake as long as you have access to the hardware video decoders.
Yeah, one of the other things is is that uh, on Intel and AMD, for instance, installing Steam can be really simple. So here you can see with the package manager of Ubuntu, you can just search for Steam and then you can install it. Well, I already installed it. So now it says open, but that's uh, all there is to it. So I already have um, Steam open. If it wants to play along. So why do I only get Here it is. So I don't have that many games on Steam because I do most of my gaming on a PlayStation 5. So uh, yeah, I don't really use Steam, but for the purpose of testing, um, we're going to try Half-Life here. And last year they gave it away for free. Well, I don't know if that's... Well, just took a while. Usually it's faster, but I don't know what's, what's going on. So in the top left corner, you can see the frames per second. Well, you can argue Half-Life is a very old game, so it's not very demanding. So you can see it's doing a steady uh, 60 frames per second. No problem there. Um, I guess uh, you get the idea. So one of the other things I usually test is uh, stable diffusion. So I found the instructions for uh, fast stable diffusion CPU. So that way you don't need a fast GPU graphics card. You can just let it run on the CPU. Of course, it's not as fast as on a fast graphics card but at least you're able to run it um, so here are the instructions um, this is from someone who has Linux working on a PlayStation 4 very interesting so you can just follow these commands uh, this is actually one command but it just is too long for one line but just copy it just as one command Step five, it yeah, gave an error on my machine, um, but I just continued with the other steps and it actually uh, does work. And all I did was um, I chose Stable Diffusion XL Turbo. I haven't changed anything else. And with Stable Diffusion XL Turbo, um, 
yeah it's okay just to leave it at one step but usually with the other model files it's better to have like 10 or 20 steps so if i test a penguin on white so usually i do a photo of uh, so stable diffusion knows that i want to have something realistically looking penguin on a surfboard and because it's only one iteration then uh, of course with a fast graphics card uh, you can do this much quicker and perhaps if you also try things like open vino perhaps it will get even quicker than this but i think for a modest chip like the Intel N100, this is perfectly acceptable performance. So the first time you generate an image, um, well, the first time it actually needs to download the model file. So once you've installed it, then you still need to get the model file. Uh, so you need quite some time to get things set up properly. And the first time you really generate an image itself, then it also has a startup time. Um, so here, usually at around 90 seconds for the first image with all the startup things. Well, I'm not really sure what it does, but uh, so here you can see 82 seconds. And here we have a penguin on a surfboard. So now, if you don't quit the program, but you try to generate something else, yeah, probably. Uh, I'm not really sure, but let's just say that it already has the model file in memory, those kind of things. Uh, and then it should be possible to generate an image in a bit over 30 seconds. Um, yeah, for better results, uh, it's better not to use the turbo model, uh, but use one of the other models and actually uh, do 10 or something like 20 iteration steps. And of course it will take a, a lot longer before you get an image, but it should also be of a better quality. So here you can see, oh, well, in this case 48 seconds, but at least uh, it is faster after the first image. And I think this, uh, well, you can still see that, especially with limbs, um, yeah, really doesn't know uh, how to do that properly. But I mean, like just for a first test, I think this is an uh, acceptable image. And if I had to draw this myself, I don't think it uh, would look as good as this. But uh, I can imagine that anyone who is a real artist uh, can make something better looking than this, um, let's just say in, a, in half an hour or something like that. So um, one last thing, so we're going to quit this. And uh, as I said, uh, you can also choose some other uh, model files. Um, I'll leave a link to this website uh, in the description of the video. And this is the GitHub page of the person that actually wrote this. So I'll also put that in the description of the video. And yeah, one last thing. 
uh, PCSX2. That's a PlayStation 2 emulator. Um, so you can see that we do three times the resolution. And I'm using the Vulkan renderer. So let's start Final Fantasy. And most of the time it is able to keep it at 60 frames per second. But yeah, some of the scenes, they are more demanding and then it drops to like 40, 45 frames per second, something like that. But I think that's uh, still uh, acceptable. So once it does a demi attack, then you can see the slowdown and you can see in the right lower corner, the frames per second. And then you probably saw it drop to something like 44 frames per second. So let's try this uh, overdrive. And for instance, with this overdrive attack, uh, I didn't see it drop below 60 frames per second. So yeah, I've seen people say that the Raspberry Pi 5 is a good desktop replacement. But in my opinion, um, if you can get an Intel N100 system, uh, let's just say a complete system with cooling case, in this case 16 gigabytes of memory, 512 gigabytes of storage for something like... Um, well, I got it for 125 euros. I saw someone who got it for a bit over 100 euros. Well, I would say in those kind of cases, it's a no brainer that you're better off with this Firebat T8 with the Intel N100 instead of a Raspberry Pi 5 as a desktop replacement. Uh, I mean, of course, the Raspberry Pi still has its advantages if you do things with GPIO or the camera connectors. But again, as a desktop replacement, I think the Intel N100 um, really leaves the Raspberry Pi 5 behind. So I hope um, this gives you an impression of what an Intel N100 system can do and the performance. So. That's all for now, and I hope to see you again in my next video.